All right, now for more on this, we joined by our reporter, Criselda Lewis, who is in Auckland Park. Criselda, thank you so much for joining us and good afternoon to you. Now, it is hoped that this inquest, this inquiry, will determine who, if any, should be held um, criminally liable. We know that Cassandra Chambers was the first witness. Talk to me about what she had to say. Well, Unati, indeed, Cassandra Chambers uh, is still on the stand. She's the first witness, and she is the operations director at the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, SADC. So SADC had received concerns from families of uh, the patients uh, prior to the move out of Esitimeni and met, amongst others, the formal mental health director, Dr. Mahabo Manamela, and uh, were assured, basically, that everything would be fine. She said uh, there was no list of identified NGOs that patients were going to be moved to. There were no clear plans and not even a figure on the number of patients that would be moved. Absolutely nothing. So Sadek has uh, had numerous correspondences regarding this. She also spoke about how Sadek was threatened, asked not to speak to the media, and basically lambasted for questioning the superiors. She also said that Sadek was not even allowed to visit the NGOs. And I want you to take a listen to this clip on how Chambers describes how they learned about some of the conditions of the patients. We received concerns from family members who had visited loved ones there, talking on how they looked really hungry. Um, they were not wearing warm enough clothes. They were getting sick. Some patients were not getting their medication. They were also concerned the reports we received from family members was that patients were not getting their medication and they were sharing it because they were not seeing any doctors. It was very part of the norm that the NGOs did not always know how many patients they were going to receive. They were expecting 10 and 40 would arrive. And that was part and parcel of what was happening during that time is a lot of the NGOs also didn't also know who the patients were. They didn't come with medical records or IDs. So often when we were trying to locate family members or patients on behalf of family members, we would have to use physical descriptions, what they were wearing, what they looked like, any physical scars that we could refer to as the NGOs didn't have a list of the names um, and the issues that these patients for dealing with. So basically, Unati Chambers basically said that the families didn't even know where their loved ones were going and that raised those concerns in writing as well as discussed in meetings. No clear plan, dates were even wrong, the assessments of the mental health care users were also wrong, she has told the court. She said that caregivers in some instances didn't even have transport to take the patients to the hospitals. And they had various meetings, over 14 formal letters that they had submitted when uh, meeting minutes also were available where they raised concerns in writing. They got confirmation that that correspondence was received. So Sadek says they offered support but were ignored. All right, Criselda, thank you so much for your update and analysis on this matter. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Criselda Lewis coming to us there from Auckland Park.